people. How many times was it rejected? Three times. So the, as they say, third time is the charm after all. So tell me, the first refusal, what did they write? All right, so I will send you a screenshot of that refusal letter as well. So somebody will ask, why was Rashida's child visa denied? <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, so I have the beautiful Rashida, Rashida Patterson. So I haven't done so many in-person interviews, but Rashida is one of the few people who have actually met personally and I have interviewed. And I got to know her just through my channel. She's part of my YouTube family. So one time I was going to London and then I'm like, oh, who's in London? Who can I interview in London? And then I got to meet Rashida. I interviewed her. I'll leave a short clip of our interview here for those who have not seen it. So you can go back and watch. Yes, and I put it on my community that if you're in London and you have an inspiring story to share, link up and luckily i got rashida so she's all the way from jamaica but i'm currently in tadward and i don't know how to pronounce it so <laughs> so rashida is from the caribbean she's from jamaica if i can remember yes. and she watched one of my videos where i was talking about opportunities for people to come to the uk as a teacher and then she decided to apply and she did apply she was successful she moved to london that's where i interviewed her as an opportunity to come to teach in the uk do you know that your interview also has testimonies this guy honestly yes. sent me a message not long ago not more than three weeks ago and then she said she watched our interview and she mm -hmm. said, mentioned some specific agencies in the interview she said she contacted yes. all of them none of them responded except one and that mm -hmm. was that and she's he's currently in the uk so i'll look for that testimony and leave a screenshot of it and if possible in this so you have been a blessing you have you because of you <laughs> relocated and god bless you and in the interview i remember you said you had a child back in jamaica or maybe it was yes in when we were having you know conversations behind the scenes i think you did mention that you had a child however when i interviewed you at the time you were alone in london yes so you tried to bring your child to join you yes it, uh, chaotic. <laughs> it has been chaotic <laughs> So, do you want me to introduce myself? Yeah, whatever I left out, you can introduce yourself or anything that I left out. All right, so some of you guys might remember my face. So I was interviewed by Nanel, got to meet her in person. I'm Jamaican, of course. Came here, I'm a science teacher as well, second grade. Been teaching here in April, make two years that I've been in the UK, teaching, of course. Of course, you know, being away from the family and especially being a mom, you'd want... The intention is to take your children. In my case, I only have the one child. And finally applied for my child and he was refused. <laughs> so we'll get into the meat of that a bit later on. But yes, so that's basically me. So usually, for those who don't know, when you come to the UK to work as a skilled worker, you come on a work visa, you are entitled to bring your spouse and your dependent below the age of 18 years to join you in the UK on your visa. They will come as your dependent. So people have been bringing their husbands and their children. So somebody will ask, why was Rashida child visa denied so i have mentioned this before on my channel that sometimes it is a struggle if the child is from a previous relationship and you're not currently with the child's father or the other parent for most people whose dependent visa have been denied their children dependent visas have been denied that is usually the case and rashida would you believe i have a lady who's also from jamaica who i used to yeah. work with <laughs> back she has gone back to jamaica yes because she tried and she has two kids you know what happened she has two kids and one of the children's visa was approved and the other was denied that and is not a decision <laughs> Her husband's visa was also approved. So they gave the visa, the visa of the child of the current husband and the husband, but denied the one from previous marriage. She tried to prove, she tried to, they were not. So she got fed up and then she left. And she's away, yeah. And she wow. went in this video, yeah. And she's from Jamaica as well. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, Nano. I was on that path, honestly. <laughs> My things were in a box. I was thinking of going back. This was my third and final attempt. <laughs> I was not going to try again. <laughs> and I did interview a lady who's also from Jamaica, mm -hmm. who also had a similar issue, but later it got approved. So she did come to share. It's on the channel. She did come to share her process and all of that. So I'm very happy that you also have tried. You tried a couple of times and it failed. How many times was it rejected? Three times. So the, as they say, third time is the charm after all. Wow. So tell me, the first refusal, what did they write? All right, so I will send you a screenshot of that refusal letter as well. But it was basically a six-page document outlining to 
me <laughs> that I need to prove what the UK calls parental responsibility. So this is where the meat of the matter is. So that term parental responsibility is so important and it is so complicated at the same time where you would not even understand. And this is where using a lawyer is actually advised in most cases so basically what they denied us on or me on for my son was saying that i did not show proof of parental responsibility in my initial application i provided his birth certificate as well as a letter from his dad because we're civilized we're fine we talk and he's perfectly fine with him coming a letter outlining and in most countries we say no to republic so that's why like we're justice of the peace got that signed by them as well and they emailed me of course i was shocked never gotten an email from the home office emailed me to ask for additional information asking what else can i show as proof that this is my child a parental responsibility now that term when i googled it didn't come up with anything at first <laughs> so we thought he was talking about parental custody and that is a problem so of course we went to the court and got them to him to sign the same letter again and i resubmitted that not even what was it three five days afterwards that's out denial that was the letter saying i need to show proof such as a parent custody order granting full parental responsibility before you continue <laughs> that is the same thing that happened to the lady at my workplace and she mm -hmm. was not comfortable with her husband sort of like saying that i give you all illegally the husband literally say that it's like i'm washing my hands off you are you have full custody she wasn't comfortable with that yes so what happened what examples did they give you so interestingly enough and this is where i think the system is a bit vague the only document that they mentioned by name was the parental responsibility court order but of course different court systems across different jurisdictions will say different things mean different things so when i went to them with the letter because i did they said this is oh this is a parental custody yes we'll do that went into court they said i need to be physically a flew to jamaica <laughs> ah. flew, flew to jamaica <laughs> to get the court document done got the document and really like yes it's all perfectly working out we're on the timeline resubmitted they asked us for additional information now we did make a mistake on that form and because of my excitement i did not double check that it did not have his full name on it so it just had his first name but that's a court thing where they protect a child's identity so we automatically thought oh that's the issue so let's go back to the court get it and then we got a denial again <laughs> so that was the second time Pardon? The second refusal after you have flown to Jamaica, gotten a call and... saying you have full custody of your child. Why was it denied again? What did they, what so, did they refuse your letter? Now, in that letter, that was a long letter. I've never seen the UK write such a long letter. So I believe that was about nine or ten pages long. It was a long letter. Now, that letter, the basic gist of that, and I'll send you snippets, what would have been that they, in UK's jurisdiction, parental responsibility and parental custody are two different things. And they went on to define what parental custody means to the UK and what parental parental responsibility means and the fact that I need to show parental responsibility. So in essence, one word <laughs> was the reason why I did not get my child twice. So of course they basically showed that and then there was also a problem i believe whoever the caseworker was was looking at my statement and not understanding so i don't know how many people use monzo now you know you can lock your money into different pots yeah separate accounts i have my money in separate accounts rather than looking at the full statement the person looked at the just the face of the account seeing that it was below the 315 pounds and said that was also a reason why they were not going to allow him to come so that was another reason <laughs> So I, I have just started using Monzo, so I understand what you mean. I can go to my yes. account right now and it will say I have zero pounds, but it's because I have put, let's say, money I have made from YouTube in one pot, money I have made from this in one pot. So just so exactly disciplined and not go. So when I open the account, it says I have zero pounds because zero dollars. Yes, I yes, and 
as we case, know yeah we can't have the money in one place now can we <laughs> it's a different thing so we had to split it so that was another reason and i had to basically show them all of this i had to show them all of this in detail what went wrong <laughs> what went wrong was so yeah so frustrating it was and i must say that i was basically in the brink you know what i went to school and my head teacher is probably one of the most sincere head teachers i've ever met i went into school and it's just the small things just a child i saw a parent walking with their child going to school to the school that i would have brought my son to and that's it triggered me and i went into school and as soon as i got upstairs to my classroom tears and i did not even realize that's the thing with depression <laughs> you don't even realize so i went in i was crying she said you know what we've never seen you look even upset not even from a child so we know it must be affecting you giving you the day off they said you don't even have to go home right away if you don't want you can wait until the kids go they gave them time got into a room she gave me a laptop gave me tissues she brought food <laughs> she put me in a nice little office and said you know what sort out what you need to sort out and if you can you can restart today if you can't I'll put it in as a compassion and just let me know in an hour's time um, trust me, I needed that because you know what? If it wasn't for that, no, no, I would have given up. <laughs> it just takes that one act of kindness sometimes, honestly. Just one act. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell her that your child has gotten the visa now. Yes. Oh my God. It was such a party in my department. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, when I told just my HOD, my head of department, and she told somebody else, and the person told somebody else, and it was just like, everybody kept coming up to me, oh my God, you got him, I'm so happy. <laughs> so it's been, it's honestly been, it's like a nice community of high school, honestly. I'm Can't happy complain. you have that, because that yeah. is really important. Because imagine if you were struggling at work, you know battling and then all of these that would easily break you that would have easily discouraged me first yeah. paycheck would have been on a plane home then, yeah 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 right. it's a tough country wow so yeah <laughs> so now in the second denial aside mm -hmm. from the error with the monzo account do you remember exactly how they explained the parental responsibility versus the cost do you remember exactly what the difference yes so this is like ptsd <laughs> so yeah. what they said was parental custody in uk law would have been that you have physical custody of the child but that does not mean that you have risk parental responsibility so they said parental responsibility is naturally given at birth to the mother and the dad as long as they're both on the birth certificate mostly the mother as well but legally you are not given parental responsibility unless you are the one making the major decisions in the child's life which surrounds things like where they live first of all where they live what is being cared for how they're being cared for i mean they are education and specifically they mentioned their medical care or their medical needs so those four points is what they mentioned so they said if you are not the one primarily doesn't have to be the only one but if you're not the one primarily or at least contributing to those those areas deciding what school they go to bringing them to doctor's appointment and you have to have proof then you do not have a parental responsibility of your child <laughs> you only have parental custody so getting that court order did me more harm than good and i did not even know <laughs> wow so they need you to prove that even as your child has been away from you, you are still the one who has been making the major decisions in the child's life. Yes. For instance, the child, although you are in the UK, has been living with your parents and not your husband. Yes. For mm -hmm. um, you are still the one sending money for the child, tuition fees. Or and that's a major one. Or even if it's not you on it, it is your yes. mother who has been doing that on your behalf. And if you can yes. do that, then you have parental responsibility. And then, actually, they do not fault you too much on the financial aspect, but just the point of someone on your, your family side being the one physically in custody caring for that child they're saying it's more substantial than being the one only financially being the one for them because then by default you're deciding where they're going for school yeah. yes Lisa, i've read something like that on the website before Lisa, mm -hmm. what kind of document did you submit to prove hey. <laughs> are you ready for this one <laughs> 
<laughs> so it was 40 plus documents that I had to supply a strenuous. And this is why they see that this is the job of the lawyer and it really should take time. And honestly, I think if you're in the position to pay for that, it might do you more good to get legal aid, although it can be costly. Now, the first thing that they need is going to be the court order because they need to see a court order saying parental responsibility. And what the court only requires is they will not edit that unless you have proof of why you need it. So that refusal letter comes in play. They will also need to see, if you claim that you're the one making the financial decisions, they will need to see that you have receipts, so like your MoneyGram, your Western Union, your transfer code, money receipt, transferring money back to the country that your child is in, proof that that is going towards your child. So maybe an account that either the person that's caring for you's name is on on and receipts going that, to the grocery. Sorry, yeah. talking about money. Let me chip in. Lemfi, you know. So as you can see <laughs> on my top, you can see Lemonade Finance. So obviously, if you send money, right? You know that some people in this day and age, you know how they send money back home. They would say, "Oh, who has pounds in exchange for, let's say, Ghana cities or naira?" Let's say I would give you Rashida two hundred pounds in here, and then you, Rashida, will let your uncle in Jamaica maker send my anti money in ghana so when you do that you don't have any electronic track record of money you have sent to your family right so mm -hmm. if you have dependents back home especially this topic that i'm talking about dependents use transfer apps like lemfi when you send money to your friends and family using lemfi there is a track record you can track how much you sent to them in the last hundred years and you can print this out and use as your proof for such visa applications yes mm -hmm. and then also, you get value for your money. For instance, when you're using Lemfi, Lemfi has the best rates ever. Unfortunately, you can't send Lemfi to Jamaica, but if you need to send money from the UK or the US or Canada to countries like Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Benin, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, you have to use Lemfi. Honestly, they have like the best rates ever. Like even at present, I don't want to say the exact rates because it might change tomorrow, even after filming this, but like when you're sending like Ghana CDs, Lemfi's rate is like, let's say almost one Ghana CD difference with some other apps. They have like the best rates. And then ever since I discovered them, that's what I've been using. I've been working with them for like three years now and that's all I've been using. And if you want value for your money, obviously you use them. And even if there are issues, you can always contact customer service to, you know, to sort you out. And now they have introduced something where when you send money to your friends and family, you earn some points. And then as you're earning those points, those points can now, transfer to like money where you can send that money i don't know if you understand mm -hmm. yeah so as you're sending money the more money you send you earn points and then these points now can later be used as money as coins that you can actually send to family actually send over as well yeah you need to talk to them to get Jamaica on the list. No, no. <laughs> so I will leave the link in the description. Or always remember to use my referral code. And then you can generate your own referral code as well. So that when people use your code, you can make money. So Rashida, back to what we were saying. You had to show proof that you had sent money to them. But then you said the home office don't even look at the financial aspect per se. It's not like yes. the pricing that they are needing you to prove. But it's just that you have been making the major decision in the child's yes. life. But even if you are not present, it's somebody in your family. You in your family family and it doesn't even have to be family as well it can be anyone on your side someone that has ties to you it can be a friend it could even be your new partner that you have or your new husband or wife that is caring for them that would make even a stronger case because that shows them that that child will have a complete family a complete household and we know the uk is very big on family as well yeah and I think the main reason why they are very strict when it comes to that is like they don't want you to keep the child away from the other parents illegally. Yeah. So they need both parents to be on the same page and they need to be so yeah. sure of that before they do that. Yeah. And you know what? I would say that I was upset. Of course you were. Um, I would be upset. But when I looked into it to look at possible reasons, I was seeing that there were currently like major problems with trafficking with children into the UK illegally and people bringing in the wrong child that they have never even met. So I can understand where they're coming from with it, but it's just that we had to provide so much. So I even had to provide uh -huh. pictures. Pictures of with my son, pictures dating years from the moment he was born. Oh. I had to show them leasing agreements. Where was I live where was I living? How can I prove that he was living with me? So oh. pictures of me there. 
had to show them bills to show that I was paying for a streaming service for him, for a child. No, no. <laughs> the <laughs> list. You can get everything you can get that has your name on or anybody on anything. your side name on that mm -hmm. is to your child's life or your child's living. And they love the fact that you have pictures. So even things like we know that we're in the 21st century where you can have video calls. So it's a lucky thing that sometimes, you know, he'll do something cute and I'll take a screenshot of me and him on a video call. And thankfully, I was the type of person that did that, you know, because I drew right back for those pictures and <laughs> show them the dates on them. And I was like, there's not a day that goes by that I don't talk to my child. And even if it's another day, it's the other day. So it's like those things they were able to see there was a relationship because that's another as proof of relationship, continuous relationship, because they mentioned, Miss Rashida, you have been out of the country for 16 months separated. It was your own personal decision to leave your child to the UK. Why do you want to take him now after so long? So that is where proof of relationship comes in. And you know what? His father, because they're not estranged in a sense, I was trying to build a relationship with them. So I said, well, you won't be seeing him for a while. So I'll let you see him for a couple of weeks prior to me coming. And unfortunately, that was prior to him coming, me applying for the visa, not knowing that that would have been detrimental. Now, because he was the one that brought him to the visa appointment, his address was the one that I unfortunately put on the visa application. They're saying, how are you saying this is your child when it seems like it is the dad's child? <laughs> so it was a whole mess. So I do have some tips to share in terms of at the end, in terms of what not to do. <laughs> to I not think we can go into that. I think we can go into that. Tell people. And with what you said, right? Another gentleman I spoke to when I was trying to help this friend of mine who is from Jamaica, who was in my way, please. What he did was his child was old enough. So he made his child write a letter as well to the home office to state why yes. he wanted to be with the father so bad. He was a man yes. and he's a nurse now in the UK. And luckily for him as well, the child has been living with his mom, which is the child's paternal grandmother. So he could mm -hmm. put that that you know he's been living with my mother the entire time blah 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 so if your child is old enough they can also write a letter as well yes. to help and then let me also say that if the other partner is not alive all you need is a death certificate and that's it then that's you know what that would make it so much simpler you probably wouldn't have been <laughs> even denied in the first place yes. <laughs> If they are alive the home office will ask you to prove so please tell us what not to do so uh, what I would say is primarily, if the child's, um, the other parent is actually involved in any way, please make it clear on your application. There is a point where you can put some additional information, but if the explanation is going to be too long, what the lawyer advised me to do was I needed to do a cover letter. So I need to do an application letter explaining things that you know they will misunderstand. Remember, these people do not know you. Some things might seem obvious to you, but state the obvious because guess what? Whatever you put on there, they have to go through it. <laughs> so you might as well put it on. So do an application letter. Explain if there was a gap in terms of where the child was living at one point. If there's another address that the child was living at even for a week and you listed that address, explain why. Maybe it was a sleepover. You send the child away for something else. You need that. You also need to prove to them that you're the one making the medical decisions for the child. So if that child goes even to the doctor for a common cold, have a picture of your receipt. Have a picture of what's it called, prescriptions, because most of the time, whoever brought that child with them, their name will be on the prescription as well, as well as the child's. The date will be on there. The doctor's address will be on there, and that will link back to your address at home. That helps per Perfectly. And that statement which showing an impact statement from the child. And now I don't even remember how many letters I put on there. And that's what helped me in, in the end, in the third application. I wrote an impact statement. I put quotes in and told them what are the things that my child is seeing. He's saying, mommy, oh my God, I missed you so much. Tell them exactly what happened. How is this affecting you? Because they need to see some emotion. This doesn't need to seem like a business transaction. <laughs> it's true. It should not be like a business transaction. And they need to see letters from that. They need letters from friends and people that are close by to you to say, this person was indeed the one that we know. This is the only parent that we know for this child. If you're religious, this parent is the only one that brings this child to Sunday school, to church. This parent is the only one 
when it comes to parents' evening. So for child report cards, this parent is the only one that we know that pays tuition. This one is the only one that does everything. You can get the church to write a letter. You can get the, you can get the church wrote a letter. Thankfully, he went to a church school. So they wrote a letter from the church perspective as well as from the school's perspective. And he's well known in the community because they know him as very friendly with the boy. He'll not pass without saying good morning to even the insane person on the road so yes they know him so thankfully he was able to get letters from every single person i said would you mind signing this letter if you don't have the time to write it i can write it you can sign it and we can say that you signed it indeed nanel i don't even know how many letters i put on there from people saying this is how it's impacting them she's the best person for her child she's the only parent you know let's get this done so it's really Honestly, when you think you're done, please add more information. And no matter how simple <laughs> the misconception might seem, explain it. Explain it because these people do not know you and they're going with what you tell them. And if you make a claim as well, the Home Office loves this word, evident. What are you basing it on? My child is affected. How do you know that? I said, okay, medically, I want my child with me. What do you mean medically? What's wrong? Is their hand broken? What's happening? I had to tell them that indeed he had an ear infection because I wasn't there to clean his ears and nobody else did it. He had an ear infection. We had to say stuff like that. So we had to tell them stuff like that. Tell them everything. It might seem like you're dishing out all of your life. You overwhelmed them with evidence. I overwhelmed them, Nanel. Evidence. And every single day I thought about something else, I sent them something else. <laughs> and you know what? This last month it took, it is the longest I've ever heard of the Home Office taking to make a decision. In Jamaica, it's normally six days, six business days. It's, it took them one month and three days to get a decision they wrote to me twice to say that they're outside of the time period and they sincerely apologize but they're still making a decision <laughs> and i'm telling that's you i overwhelmed them love of a mother you went yes <laughs> and I'm yeah so thankful to god that you did not give up and he's gonna be honestly married. you have to prove because the other lady i interviewed i think she had to prove how she's gonna take care of the child alone when the child comes did you have to prove yes and i also had to put that on i had to show them his school's already ready i took pictures of his school uniform that i bought his receipt his his shoes i took a picture of his clothes that i bought for him his nice little furry coat his hat is <laughs> everything <Aww. laughs> I showed them a screenshot no, of the I mapping I can of the journey. Them. I can envision them gossiping about you at the office. Talking yes, about I must be famous over there. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> I showed them everything. Like, oh. I even showed them, because you know the breakfast and after school club. I showed them, look, I booked his breakfast and after school club because this is how confident I was that he was coming. I pre-booked it two months in advance, pre-paid for that. Show them the receipt and show them the fact that I'm getting a refund because of the fact that he's not coming. No, no. <laughs> don't know what I didn't show them. Wow. I am so <laughs> Everything. And you put in every, like, you did, you did a good job. Yes. <laughs> So, so wishing that my friend will watch this video and maybe reconsider and see if she can retry again and then you know try and then come wow your final words and then because this is already 33 minutes your final words. yes the final words guys i would say don't give up i know it might seem hard and if you are not the person that is as annoying and as persistent as i am go through a lawyer but just be aware that it will be costly because lawyer fees start at £2,000, except that's separate from the visa fees. So if you want to put in the work yourself, do it yourself. Basically, once you've ticked all the boxes, there's nothing better. The last thing I said to them, which is why they gave me the decision, was to show them exactly every single point in the appendix that they have on there that's a 23 page document i showed them every single point how he met every single thing and referenced every single piece of evidence that i had how exactly they're breaking his rights what they're doing wrong i called them out on every single thing if you have the time and the patience do it <laughs> if you don't pay for it <laughs> but that is my final words yes and you were so confident you were going to get it because you contacted me before the decision came. Yes, 
So you remember I emailed you and I um I texted you and I said, no, no, I'm getting my son because I was like, I'm getting my son. There is no way that they're going to see this and not give me my son at this point. No one is going through all of this to traffic a child. <laughs> Nobody. Wow. wow. Well done. So, yeah. And thank you so much. Send me your address. I'll send him a gift when he arrives. When is he arriving? He's arriving in two weeks. <laughs> In two weeks. Are we having a welcome party? <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. I'm bringing him out to his favorite restaurant. Plus, he's four. He's about to be five in December. And I promised him that he'll be getting his cake in the UK. So <laughs> wow. we'll be spending Christmas together after That's all. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I wish you all the yes. best. Okay. And may God give Thank you, you. Strength to be able to take care and of him. Keep doing what you're doing, Nanel, because without you, we wouldn't have been here in the first place. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I re-looked at some of the videos. I rewatched the video that you said, I uh, mentioned about someone else and actually got the inspiration to keep going. I was like, no, Nanel went through a lot. These people that you keep interviewing went through a lot. And if I give up, it would just be a part of the yeah. statistics. And I don't know why so you know all people I have met who have gone, three people, they are all from Jamaica. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're resilient people. As well, who went through that? Yeah. Yes. Wow. So. Wow. Thank you so much, Rashida. And Thank I guess I'm going to leave Rashida's YouTube on the screen and I'm going to tag you as well so that people can yes. send you personal messages. You know, some people might want you to go through their letter for them or something, you know? Yes. <laughs> and I do plan to go through all of the letters. I'm drafting a couple of <laughs> ones, wow. but I will do that on my channel. So look out for that as well. That will be helpful. I'll leave your channel details as well. 